Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial process video. Today we're gonna to be making a fun Tetra style animation. I've got my references over here. These pieces are called Tetraminos. As you guys know, Tetris is one of the most popular games in the world, um, if not the most popular. It's sold more copies than most games. I think Minecraft surpassed it at one point, but regardless, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this as Tetris. And we're just going to go ahead and hop right into it. So I'm going to actually delete all this because I'm going to show you guys how I made this. First of all, let's go ahead and add in a cube. And we're going to build all our pieces first in this master file. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to um, call them into another file. So I'm going to explain everything as I go. Very first thing we're going to do, add a bevel. Oops, sorry, add a bevel to this. Um, and then we're going to add an array modifier. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually duplicate this array modifier on the on the um, Z axis like this and we just want to give ourselves a nice little grid here a 4x4 four four, um, so that we can build every piece from this 4x4 four four. so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to apply all of this um, and then I am going to highlight this in edit mode I'm gonna select a to so select all right click and then I'm gonna go to separate by loose parts and now as you can see all of these cubes are individual and we can delete them as needed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of these. I'm also going to delete my camera. Highlight these. I'm going to move them into a new um, collection. I'm just going to call this blue. And then I'm going to duplicate this collection. And I'm going to call this next one green. And I'm going to do. I'm going to keep repeating this process for each one of these. Duplicate the collection. Call this one um, yellow. And it's important to name these correctly because we are going to be calling these in a file later. And then this one, we'll call this orange. Um, duplicate again, and I'm hiding these as I go so we can come back to them. This one will be green. And then we'll duplicate this again, and we'll call this last one, uh, what do we get? Blue, green, yellow, um, orange, and then, oh, we need pink. Okay, so pink is the last one. Okay, cool. So now that we have this all set up, guys, we can now go to our, like, our side view here, and we can say, okay, Let's go ahead and create the pink one first because we're on the pink collection. All the pink one is is a um, is like three pieces like this. Sorry, three pieces across and one down. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything that I don't need. And as you guys can see, we now have our pink Tetris piece. This is fantastic, and this is what we're gonna do for each one. Um, and then we're gonna come back and do some like materials afterwards. So we have the pink one done. I'm gonna hide that collection. Let's go over to the green one. As you guys can see, the green one is um, going to be pretty simple as well. Uh, that is the green one. So cool, we have the green one now. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Orange is going to be like an L shape, so I'm going to go ahead and make that. And there we go. Okay, so there is our orange one. Again, I'm just going in and deleting the pieces I don't need for each collection. All right, we are on the yellow piece, which is just a cube. So there is our yellow piece right there. Let's go over to the green piece again. Oh, I thought I already did the green. I already did the green piece. My fault, guys. Let me go ahead and delete this collection. Hold on. Delete that collection. Uh, blue piece is just a four across, so I can just delete this bottom half here. Perfect. So now, if we go through each one, we have our blue piece. Yup. Yellow piece. Yup. Orange piece. Yup. Green piece. Yup. And pink piece. Cool. So we have all one, two, three, four, five pieces here, and we are good to go. So now at this point, guys, we can start adding materials. Um, but I want to show you something. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to make a new document. Um, I'm going to delete everything in this document. I'm going to go to File, Append, and then I'm going to go ahead and locate my Tetris pieces here. So in our Tetris document, we're actually going to go into the collection folder, and you'll see we have all of our collections here. Um, if I go ahead and double click on green, you see now we have our green piece in here. This is how we're gonna be building this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as Tetris master file. Or actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this as Tetris scene. Okay, and we're gonna be pulling everything from our other file, which I'm gonna to refer to as the master file, which is the file with all of the pieces in it. Now remember, you have to name your correction your collections correctly or it will this will not work. All right, since we're done with this uh, little block at this point, I'm going to full screen blender so we can actually really see what we're going to be doing here. So in terms of our materials, um, this is the blue piece. So I'm going to have to go over to cycles, GPU, 
and I'm just going to just add a quick environment texture in here. Oops, sorry, environment texture. And let's go ahead and just add in the sky texture so we can kind of see what we're doing. Okay, cool. So for these ones, I think I'm just gonna give these a simple blue metallic shader. So I'm gonna click on new shader. I'm gonna use blue here, that's fine. Metallic, lower roughness, and then maybe bump up that anisotropic value, whatever that is called. And then I'm going to copy the materials over. So there is our blue piece, perfect. And I'm gonna do the same for each one of these. So for the yellow piece, just like before, new material, I'll make it like a yellow kind of gold metallic with a low roughness. And again, linking all these materials together. So we have our yellow, our blue looks good, and let's do our orange. So for the orange, I'm gonna try to make this more of like a red, red orange, something like that looks pretty good. Metallic, low roughness. Again, we're kind of just creating something that's sort of stylized. We can come back to the materials later, but I'm gonna show you how cool this is with these linked files here, guys. So again, the green, we're just gonna make a quick green material. I think that looks pretty good. Metallic and lower roughness. And again, linking these is Control L to pull up that menu to link these materials. And let's lastly do the pink material. New material, make this kind of like a pink color, metallic, low roughness. And then what's great is once we do link the materials, we can still change the brightness of the pink if we need to. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and save this and go back to our Tetris scene. And now if we go to rendered view and we go to cycles GPU and we throw a little environment texture on here. Oh, my fault guys. You didn't want to append, you wanted to link. Go to file link and then go ahead and pull in your uh, Tetris pieces. So now, as you guys can see, when I pull in that Tetris piece, it's automatically gonna be linked to the other file. So it's gonna have all of the same properties. So I'm gonna go ahead and link each piece. This is the blue piece. I'm gonna go ahead and link the um, orange piece. I'm gonna go ahead and link the pink piece. And then I'm gonna go ahead and link the yellow piece. Now you're probably wondering, well, why is everything overlapping? That's because we have to actually move everything um, as needed. So I'm going to probably turn on grid snapping here and hope that it snaps properly. Yep, it looks good. I'm just going to move everything as needed here. Perfect. So what's great about this is when we move these, they increment in perfect snapping position. So we can actually go ahead and lock them into place in a way that actually like makes sense. This is perfect. Look how awesome this is. We can just go ahead and do that. We can also duplicate if needed. Now rotating is a whole nother thing. We have to be careful with rotating because um, the origin itself is going to be different for every piece. As you can see when I select this piece and I rotate it, the origin is the bottom left of this piece. But So just keep that in mind. The origin in the world of where these are linked is going to be the origin of these objects. But this is awesome because now we can kind of go ahead and duplicate things, rotate them as needed and we can like piece things together very easily now, which is fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted. And if you hold control guys, that's how you can snap things into place. Um, I think I'm actually missing a piece because I'm pretty sure there's a piece like this that is, hold on, I, I'm pretty sure I'm missing a piece here. No? Yeah, I am missing a piece because if you guys look here, I knew it, there was, there was a flipped piece that is very similar to the L but it's flipped. And I'm also noticing now that apparently this piece is supposed to be purple. All right, let's just really quickly um, fix that. I knew I was, I, I really thought maybe I was missing something here. Hold on, the original Tetris only had these five pieces though. So do we just work with these five pieces here? Hmm, this is, this is, the, this is the question of a lifetime here. Yeah, because I think, and also I think even this piece here also has a flipped like brother or cousin that is like just like this piece but these pieces still fit nicely within each other but yeah this is nice okay it's kind of nice because now we can piece everything together as needed so this is super cool i'm just going to add a little floor in here scale this up and i'm going to bring this down as you can see this is snap still snapping into place which is fantastic 
Let's go ahead and snap to our camera view. I'm just going to set up a nice little camera angle here. I'm going to give ourselves 1080 by 1920 for the dimensions. And of course, guys, I am going to choose an isometric view. Sorry, orthographic view. And I'm just going to move my camera like up here somewhere. Cool. And I'm going to zoom out a lot. I'm also going to adjust my end clipping to 10,000. So there's no chances of anything getting clipped in a weird way. Cool. And remember, when you have snapping on, the camera is going to snap too. So just you know, keep that in mind as you build your project out. But this already looks really cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just give the floor a nice metallic shader here with like a lower roughness. That looks awesome. And then, of course, you guys already know I'm going to probably enable my depth of field. And it's going to be very subtle, but we'll be able to adjust it as we go. Cool. All right. This will be really, really fun to play around with. So here's what I'm thinking, guys. We're going to have to create some kind of like box for these things to fit inside of and then kind of come down um, and they're all, they'll all fit together. I just, I don't know if I'm going to add these other pieces yet or not. For now, I'm going to go ahead and build a a box that is the proper size. So I'm just going to pull up um, a reference image real quick. Tetris original. I'm just going to see how many blocks across this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks across. Okay, and it's funny because in this, guys, I'm actually seeing they do have the reverse blue piece. Okay, so it's ten blocks across. So let me just quickly do this. Oops. Hold on, guys. Let me move this up. I'm just going to do an array of 10 for this um, so we know how big this is supposed to be. And I'm going to give these a little bevel so we can kind of see the increments here. So this is how long this, this board should be. And then I'm also going to take a look at how high this should be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, so it's also 20 high. So I'm going to duplicate this, bring it up, and then I'm going to make it like this. And this is, oh, actually, I'll make this 19 because, um, because of the one at the bottom here. Okay, so now if we go ahead to move this down, we'll move these down like this. Perfect. So this will be kind of like where we are, where we're at right here with our the size of our board. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <laughs> Apologies. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm also going to add in a mirror modifier for both of these. So I'm just going to add in an empty plane axis, bring it on up, and I'm going to put it like I don't know, right here in the center. <laughs> Cool. And I'm going to go ahead and click on my bottom layer. I'm going to do a mirror modifier and I'm going to do the Z axis and I'm going to click on my empty. Then I'm going to just bring my empty up and to somewhere that makes sense. And I'm going to do the same for this one as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on the X. Perfect. Okay. So now we have our frame for our Tetris animation. So this is perfect. So this is the actual size that it was originally. As you guys can see, this piece is kind of not where it should be perfect again with our snapping turned on this makes this so so much easier um, I'm also thinking we might be able to we're gonna probably have to readjust our camera angle and such so let me just click on my camera back this up a little bit cool and then we're gonna have to scale that up cool so again we have this really cool already this is really really fun um, I'm also just gonna take a look at that reference again it kind of reminds me of like these gray bricks. So I think I'll probably go with something like gray bricks for the outside. Um, for now, I'll just make these like a nice metallic material with a lower roughness. I'll just make them like kind of gray like that. And then of course, we are going to copy the materials. Perfect, so we have our nice frame here. I might even make this just a little bit darker. This is starting to look really cool and fun. Um, and I knew this was gonna be something that was a little bit more f on the fun side. Like it doesn't have, there's, no pressure with this kind of stuff. Um, let me just delete this one. Rotate this. Cool. It's fun because you can easily put pieces wherever you want. Um, I'm probably going to have them come from the top side here um, and just slowly fall into place. 
but this is already just so much fun and we can add some like more details to these pieces as we go but i'm just having a good time building this out um one thing i'm going to do real quick is head over to the shading tab and just make a nice brick texture for this bottom floor and i want it to match up with this grid so i'm just going to add a brick texture i love i've been loving using this brick texture lately zero offset would be fantastic brick height and width we'll just make them both 0.1 mortar size we'll make it 0 0.005 and then the scale will adjust um, from the top down view so we can kind of see what's going on i'm also going to apply the scale to our um to our floor here all right let's see i feel like that's pretty close oh that's pretty much it a little bit more maybe Oh, I was there before. Hold on. All right, that looks pretty good. So we'll go with something like that. Cool. That's really close. We can come back to this later. Again, when you hold shift, you can easily like increment this value. Or right now, we could do like 0 0.09 for both of these. Right? And it'll change it just a little bit. But in my case, 0 0.11 might work. Hold on, I'm going to try 0 0.1 very very close just adjusting the scale very slightly okay point one was actually the, the sweet spot there so we're gonna go back to that it's like nearly perfect all right we'll just pretend that's perfect but this looks really good let's go to rendered view now another thing we can do is we can adjust this coloration here something a little bit more subtle might look good or we do have that slight variation and again roughness value on the floor we can adjust that too so this is starting to look really really fun this is just like a fun little render here um, again with our camera as usual I'm also going to go into my viewport display properties and kind of just narrow in on our scene here so we can really see what we're working on this is starting to look really fun really playful um, I might even raise the exposure a little bit not too much yeah just to create that nice um, contrasty look depth of field um, got to be careful with this here I'm gonna actually adjust that by hand all right that looks good for now and we'll, we'll bring the value up a little bit maybe like three f3 there we go that looks better so you have a subtle depth of field but it's still it's not overwhelming cool um, I'm gonna adjust the roughness of this this plane right here as well I love that nice metallic look where it's not perfectly reflecting, but it's just giving you some slight color variation in the floor. All right. Let's do the thing that I've been ignoring right now, which is creating the other blocks that I need to create. So we need a reverse of this green block, which is going to be red. And then we need a reverse of the orange block, which I think I might just make purple. It's really confusing because I'm seeing a lot of different references here for these tetraminos. So it's frustrating thinking about what's the correct because this one has a total of seven pieces and you can see we have the opposite. I feel like this is the correct one. Hold on. We're going to open up this one and we're going to go with this. Yeah, let's let's do this. So I'm going to go back to my original Tetris file with these pieces here. I'm also going to go to my material preview so I can like see what the heck is going on. Um, purple piece or this piece looks fine. I'm going to make this more of like a purpley color. That's fine. Um, green piece. So the green piece, we're just going to duplicate that whole collection and call it red. And I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to make a new material that is like a, like a solid red. And then I'm going to copy these. Now, right now, this needs to be reversed. So this all needs to be completely flipped. So I'm going to take these two pieces. Oops, I do not have my locking on. There we go. All right, I think we're good. Did I do that properly? Yeah, I think I did. Okay, so the red piece, yep, that is correct. Okay, so our red piece is good to go. So that was one of our missing pieces. And then our orange piece, we're going to need to duplicate that and make like a darker green piece. So I'm gonna duplicate that collection. I'm gonna call this um, blue L so that it's not confusing. Uh, and then I'm going to take this and make this like a darker blue. Still high metallic, lower roughness. And I'm gonna link those materials. And then we're gonna to have to reverse this. We're gonna put this on the other side. Cool. 
All right, I, we should be good to go. I believe that's all of the things that we need. Let's go ahead and go back to our Tetris scene. Let's add in those missing pieces here. File, link, and then let's add in our blue L, which is now right here. Cool, and let's add in our red. So I believe, guys, now we have every single piece we would need. Uh, let me just double check this. Yeah, because I was thinking earlier if I was actually playing the game, what we would need to complete that one part there. So as you can see, now we can easily complete the puzzles um, without having to actually worry this time. So what's great is, um, you know what I'm wondering, guys? We can probably create some really cool animations where stuff is kind of spinning on its way down. So look at this. Now everything fits pretty much perfectly. So we can really get into this thing now. All right. All right. Now we have all the pieces because I remember when I played this game, um, there was pieces that I I have, I didn't see in here. So this is looking a lot better. And remember, guys, in our master file, we can change all of the materials easily. So anything that you guys um, want to change, you can change it in the original file and it'll update over here. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Um, now the floor really quick. I'm gonna go over to the shading tab real quick click on that floor now for the displacement I'm just gonna plug in my um, FAC right here and you won't notice much of a difference But if we add I'm sorry don't plug it into the displacement plug it into the normal and then go ahead and add a Bump I believe that's what I did last time and then for your mortar smoothing I'm gonna turn that up and you can notice now, if you zoom in real far, we have a slight bump right here. You guys can adjust this value as needed. Oh, there we go. That's it. Okay, so the mortar smoothing, I'm just going to smooth this out just a little bit. That looks good. And now we actually have some real like dimension to our floor. Again, it's kind of like faking the dimension, but it looks good. Um, and then the distance, you can adjust that too as needed. All right, cool. That looks much better. It's it's much more of like a detailed looking floor. So, okay, cool. Let's actually animate this thing. So right now, everything's kind of just sitting in there, but I'm kind of ready to actually animate this. So yeah, let's see. We have all of our pieces sitting here. Now we have to decide at what point do we want to like call it. So I'm going to duplicate my pieces in a way that makes sense to me um, that, that would actually like complete a line. So I think I'm going to need a one piece right now I used to play Tetris a lot and I was pretty good at it so I should be able to do this we'll see again it's gonna take some thinking but oh, okay here we go we got it alright so we just need a blue piece, blue piece right here and now we have a completed line or not a completed line but we have a like level surface so we could call it on this and just have everything drop into place now one thing I could do guys is I could jump forward to frame like 120 or maybe one how about we'll call it 180 insert a keyframe for the location and rotation of every single piece um, And then we'll drop them in but the way I'm looking at it right now Some of these pieces are gonna have to be placed in a very interesting way here um, Let's just try it and see what happens. I'm gonna insert location I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do location for everything All right and again, this is their like final resting position here. I'm interested to see how this works because I don't know. It, I don't know how well this is gonna work, but we'll see. All right, I think I got every one of the pieces here. Yep. Okay. So now let's go back to like frame 120 and let's bring up some of these pieces here. All right, this one should probably be. All the way up here uh, this one 100% should be all the way up here oops this one should be right here you know it might be cool is if these things just went up and down like they didn't really just appear but rather they switched spots if I don't know if that's make makes sense but let's just see what this looks like hold on And then we're gonna have to shift around some of the keyframes because right now, if we if we play this back, they're all just gonna look like they're coming down at once. So we're gonna have everything alternate. All right, this one should be right there. All right, let's stop it there. And let's go ahead and adjust the keyframes. So 
This one, everything will end at 180. So I think this one we're going to need to pull back to 110. This one, we'll pull that back to 105. Or hold on. 115. So now if we watch, boom, you see how there how there's like some slight alternation now? And then this one, we don't want that to reach the end until like not 190. And then for this one, we'll have it reach the end at 200. Now, as we move these keyframes around, you can tell what is happening here, which is exactly what I wanted which is I want these things to slightly be falling in a different way. So I don't want them all to, to appear at the same time. Um, this one will do a couple frames behind as well. This one, perfect. And as you space these out, you can visually see how they're gonna fall down. Cool. Awesome. Now, before this, though, we need everything else to also uh, be keyframe. So I'm going to insert the keyframe locations for these bottom pieces here. Cool. And then we're going to go jump back to frame like 90. And I'm going to bring this up. And then we're going to do the same here. Although I'll make this like that. Very nice. All right, cool. Now, remember, certain pieces have to go up before others. So this one has to go up before anything else. And then next would be this one. However, all right, good. And then frame 70, we'll go ahead and put this piece in. And for this one, we'll do 65. This snapping is just the most clutch thing ever. And then the last lead will go to frame 50. All right, let's go ahead and play this back. See what it looks like. I I'm really curious because I have no idea how this is going to look. Not bad. I mean, honestly, at a higher frame rate, that might look really nice. Let's let's just go ahead and see. It's pretty satisfying because everything everything perfectly aligns really nicely. Um, I think it looks really good. I think in terms of the actual animation, I guess I'll start it at frame like 40 or so. Yeah, I'll just start it at frame 40 and we'll end it at frame 180. Or sorry, 200. Now we could do something where it like all comes back up, like we reverse it and then it goes back down. That could be cool. You know what would be a really fun addition to this whole thing is a plane with some rotation. We'll just rotate on the X90 and then we'll scale it up on the Z. Cool. And we'll scale it on the X. And we could add like a nice little subdiv to this. And maybe we could also, actually, hold on, let's undo that. Let's apply the scale and then add a subdiv. And let's go ahead and add a wireframe modifier. And we could add like a nice like grid behind everything. Right now this grid is not perfect, but we could make it almost perfect. Actually, what am I thinking, guys? We're gonna add in a cube. We're just gonna make an array. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Um, but anyway, what I was thinking, guys, is we can make like a really fun little like matrix of um, of cubes here. I think I might just duplicate this, add a wireframe modifier, and then for my array, I'll just add in one more array right here and it'll be on the opposite side there we go perfect so I think I think that's the proper grid although for the thickness of the wireframe we're gonna need to increase that thickness 
and I was thinking we do like a nice glow. Um, now, you guys are probably thinking this doesn't look good. Let me just see what this would look like if we were to apply a nice emissive shader to this. Okay, not quite, not quite what I imagined. I'm scaling it on the Y to just see what this could potentially look like. That's kind of nice. That was kind of what I was imagining, but at the same time, it's not, it's definitely not perfect. Again, with the wireframe modifier, it's not quite thick enough, so I might thicken it a little bit more. It's kind of nice. Maybe just scale it on the Y just a little bit. That's kind of a nice touch. I might I might leave it, I might not. I might hide it for now and come back to it later. But I'm thinking it would be cool if there was like a, a almost like a grid right here. We could do another another um, grid floor shader and maybe make that emissive. Let's see, RX90, scale that up. Bring it in here. Perfect, apply that scale. All right, now that we have that, let's go over to the shading tab and add a brick texture in. Perfect, so it's kind of like cutting into our shapes, but that's okay, because you're not really gonna notice that. Um, and then I'm just gonna create a new shader, add in a brick texture, plug that in. And <laughs> you know what's funny? Already, I don't know if that's perfect or not. It's pretty darn close to perfect. And then just mess with the scale a little bit. That's pretty close. Oh, you know what? There we go. Did I change the offset? Hold on a second. That doesn't look correct. Uh, let's add in a mapping node and texture coordinate. I think maybe it's just the mapping. Cool. All right, let's plug that in. Oh. Well, that fixed the problem. All right, and then for our mortar size, we'll do 0 0.005, nice and thin. And that actually, right there, is actually almost perfect. You know what I realized? I should probably wait until all the pieces settle at 200. Hold on. There we go. Now we can actually adjust this value. Perfect. All right, I think that's good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna plug in, instead of this, I think I might mix this with a transparent BSDF. And I'll just do a little mix action, mix shader. We'll just plug it in like this. And then I think we can do the FAC right here. Let's see, oh, hold on. Let's see if we can do this, did that work? That kind of worked. Ooh, that, that actually is kind of nice. I kind of like that. And then maybe we give this a slight transmission value too. Ooh, there we go. And then we'll make our mortar color white. Everything else we'll make like, like that. You can see we have this just ever so slightly nice grid. Maybe we can adjust the emission strength. No, that's not gonna work. Oh. Oh, you know what? Let's try this. Emission. I'm curious if this will work or not. Kind of. A little bit. Hold on. Shaders are so tricky sometimes. Uh, let's see. Color, color, color. FAC. Maybe one more mix shader. Plug the emission in here. And then... Oh, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Fantastic. Look at that. 
and there's no wireframe involved. But this is this is kind of a fun little shader. Um, the only thing is strength. Yeah, there we go. Strength. We want that up higher. I want the strength to be at like eight. That looks so good. Okay. And then what's cool is we. I think this transmission value we can mess with this too, and then these right here we should be able to mess with as well. And then the roughness we can mess with that metallic. Perfect. This looks really cool. I probably overdid the actual shader shading element, but I do love that this is just like a perfect grid now. Um, so let's go ahead and play this back. You know what I was thinking, guys? I might highlight everything and just go to frame 50 and scale the keyframes down so that they're they're faster. It's not it doesn't want to highlight all the keyframes here. I don't know if that worked or not. Okay, so that did not work and I don't know why. Maybe we'll just uh, raise the FPS to like 60. All right, now the goal is we'll reverse it once it's at 200, but we'll do that in post so we don't have to render it out again. Um, but let's go ahead and check on motion blur here. Now, I think I'm going to mess with the materials of these Tetraminos a little bit more. Um, I have this awesome real-time materials pack by Ducky3D. So let me head back over here, and then let me go to the uh, real-time materials pack. Now, what's cool about this pack is everything in here is customizable, and there's, there, there's just some really great materials in general. Um, I love this section here because these are some nice, like, beat-up materials that have, like, scratches and dings and dents. I really really love this one is detail paint what's cool about this is we could use something like this and we could just change the color and we automatically have like an incredible looking material so I'm gonna copy these over here and then I think I'm gonna copy the galvanized steel as well where's our galvanized steel that's right here I'm gonna copy these over into my Tetris file and I'm just gonna paste them in and then I'm going to move them to their own collection called Hide. And you guessed it, we're going to hide that collection. Uh, where, why can't I do that? Hold on. I'll just make the new collection now. Oh my gosh. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so Hide. We're going to go ahead and move these other ones to Hide. Perfect. All right. And then we're going to go to Rendered View. And we're going to select this let's start with the yellow because i think i think the yellow one was already almost perfect or that that material was almost perfect so look at that that looks awesome all right let's adjust the roughness a little bit and then the paint scale we can adjust that too now the underneath color you can make that like whatever you want you can adjust the roughness scale as you guys can see, it might be hard to see on my screen, but you can adjust pretty much everything about this material, which is fantastic. Let's see, paint scale. Whoa, that's awesome. There's so many different values you can adjust here. The roughness of the actual paint itself, and then of course the under underlying color. I might make the underlying color like another yellow it's like slightly, ooh, that's perfect. All right. Cool. Again, I'm just quickly making these materials. This looks good. Maybe adjust the, the paint seed a little bit more. That's, that looks good, I think. Something like that, perhaps? Yeah, I think that's good. All right, let's call it on that. And let's do the orange one. Now, for the orange one, I'm literally going to take that same material, duplicate it. And I'm just going to make this slightly more orange, like that. Same here. Boom, just like that. I think that looks really good. And then the roughness scale, I think I might mess with the roughness scale just a little bit here. That looks good. Cool. Uh, all right, let's go ahead to the blue one. Let's go ahead and see what we have here. Um, I might mess around with this material here. What else do we have? Chipped paint. 
That one's good too, because then we can adjust the chip scale as well. Ooh, I like this. All right, let's try this one. Let's do a nice dark blue. And let's just copy those materials over. And then for the underlying color, of course, we're going to do another blue. We'll just make that a little bit darker. Roughness scale, we'll turn that down. And then we can mess with this as well. I think that looks pretty good. Again, we're just adding a little bit more to these materials. All right, let's try. Which one did we not do yet? Oh, here's another one we didn't do. All right, this is this is a cool one. All right, let's go ahead and check out chipped paint. No, how about island paint? Yeah, let's do this one. And I'm going to make this a lighter blue. And I actually think that looks perfect just like that. I think I might just keep it at that. Maybe adjust the roughness scale a little bit, make it a little lower. And then for that underlying color, we'll do like just a light, maybe like a darker blue. Something like that, maybe. Scratch detail. Whoa. I think that looks good. What do you guys think? I think that's good. All right, cool. We'll call it on that. And blue, we got blue. We have we don't have green yet. All right, let's do green. So for green, I think I'm going to go back to detail paint, duplicate that, and then I'm just going to change the hue around like this. And then, of course, the hue of the underlying paint as well. I think I might make this a little bit darker. Yep, something like that. Cool. Oh, you know what? Did I duplicate that material? Please tell me I did. Blue, we're good. Yep. Cool. Awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that material over. Perfect. And let's go ahead and do the red next. So for the red, I think detailed paint was what I wanted for that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and change all these values. And I'm going to go ahead and copy them over. Perfect. And that looks good. I think I'm just going to adjust the scale. And then roughness looks good. Perfect. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think that looks good. I'll adjust the roughness just a little bit more. Make these a little bit more metallic than the others. All right, pink. Let's see. For pink, I think we're going to do island paint. No, let's try detail paint. Hmm. Looking through all of our options here. Chipped paint is always a nice one. Let's try that. Let's do pink. And pink. And copy that over. Or was pink supposed to be more of a purple? I think it was supposed to be like more of a purple. Let's try it. All right, that looks good. And I think that's everything, guys. Let's go back over to our original file and see if that all updated properly. And as we can see, it did. Now, the only material I have an issue with is this blue one. So let me go back real quick and go to the blue. Or is it this one? No, it's this one here. Yeah, OK, this one. I just need to adjust that scratch scale. Maybe we do a different one for this. Yeah, let's do this and just brighten this on up. Cool. And let's go back over and go to Tetris. Yep, good. And let's check. Everything looks good. Okay, cool. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Again, these are kind of like some really, really simplified materials, but cool. And it can kind of just fall down like that. That is awesome. Cool. I just kind of want to wanted to like record this process, see what you guys thought. The depth of field is looking pretty good. I'll probably raise the camera up a little bit. Look how simple our hierarchy is, though. We don't have much in our hierarchy at all, and that's because we're really not. Um, there's there's no overcomplication here because we're linking everything from the original file. Um, so yeah, and then we have our grid floor shader that looks fantastic. I'm pretty happy with everything. Oh, you know what I do want? 
I want to go back to my real time materials pack and get that galvanized steel. There it is. Copy that over and put it in the Tetris scene because I want the galvanized steel to be this frame here. Let's just go ahead and click on render view. Click on this galvanized steel and I think that looks really good. You can kind of see it right here. Now the scale, we can adjust the scale as needed. I think that looks perfect. Cool. Love that galvanized steel look. And it just kind of brings another element to our render. Yeah, I think this is looking really, really good. Um, the blue is a little bit bright. Um, I, I'm, I'm not very happy with that blue, so hold on. Let me just let me go back here, maybe darken this up just a little bit. Cool. I just think it's a little bit overwhelming for our scene. That's better. It's a little more, a little more subtle. All right, let's go ahead and, and pick a different lighting setup. Right now, we just have a regular sky. Let's try this. Nope. Let's try sunrise. Sunrise is kind of cool. This is just like a nice outdoor scene. Now remember guys, depending on the lighting and like the actual angle that we're at, we're gonna get completely different results depending on that. This is a studio environment, completely different. See how it drastically changes everything? It's kind of nice. And then I think I might go over to my shading tab, go to my world, and I'm going to add in mapping and texture coordinate. And I'm just gonna plug them in like this. And I'm gonna adjust the rotation of my world. That's kind of fun. See, I kind of like that angle. It's kind of like a dramatic camera angle there. Yeah, this is looking really good. I mean, overall guys, I'm pretty happy with the, with the way this is kind of turning out. And I think I might call it soon on this and just actually render this thing out because I think it's getting close to being finished. Um, the depth of field is very strong. It looks good. Let's go ahead and render out a quick frame. I'm just going to go to my light path settings. We'll do, we'll do 30 for everything. And I know what you guys are thinking. Kenny, you don't have any volumetrics. You don't need to do 30. Well, I don't care. So let's do 150 samples. I'm just going to go into denoising and do optics and do F12. And let's go ahead and see what we get. And as you guys can see, we have nothing. And I don't know why. Um, there's something that's either hidden or not showing. Oh, nothing is showing for render. Why? Oh, I know why. We have to go back to our Tetris file and make sure render is enabled for all these collections. I believe that's why. Let's go back to Tetris scene. No? OK. Oh, we didn't have, uh, nothing was enabled to render there. Okay, there we go. We should be good now. Cool. All right, so we actually are getting a rendered shot. There we go. All right, this is really cool because you can see the motion blur of the pieces falling. And we can adjust this to any FPS we want, which is awesome. I think this turned out really, really nice, though. You know what I was also thinking is, okay, that was nine seconds for that. Okay. So I think we're going to render this out. I'm going to take a quick break, but you guys have a great day. Whoever's watching this on YouTube, I will be posting the full video to my Instagram. Um, but for now, I am going to hop off and go ahead and take a little break here. Um, we'll come back to some more YouTube tutorials later. You guys have a great day. Check out the Discord. Check out the Instagram, the TikTok. All the links will be down in the description below, as well as this material pack, which I highly suggest checking out. So I hope you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.